this is a photography tip that you want to gonna this is a photography tip if you want this is a photography tip you're gonna want to pay attention to What's up guys, I'm Evan Naka and we are back at the home studio garage. And today we're gonna be covering a topic that when I was actually doing my own research, I couldn't really find anything about this. You, you do not exist. You know, I was going through YouTube, I was going on Google, I was going through Vimeo. Does anybody use Vimeo? And I couldn't find anything. And that's creating product smears for makeup companies or skincare companies or any company that has some type of cream that you wanna show texture or whatnot. I don't care. And it's a good thing to know just to have in your arsenal of like photography skills that you have to offer different companies. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for them. And some people call it product swatches or makeup swatches or cream swatches or what, what have you, whatever the terminology is. And what these are is when you go to like an e-com site that actually sells either makeup or skincare products or something along those lines, they usually have the picture of the product then they have maybe a close-up or a macro of it. And then a lot of the times they have like this kind of creamy, textury, smooth, just wipe. Sometimes it's just like a clean wipe. Sometimes it's a little messy. That's what we're gonna be creating today. That's the product smear. That's the product swatch, makeup swatch, whatever you wanna call it. We're gonna be working with skincare products today and we're gonna create the perfect swatch. So keep watching. I'm gonna show you exactly how I set it up so that the next time a company comes to you and says, hey, can you do this? You're gonna go, yeah. So let's do this thing! So first things first, I told you we're in the studio, but let's look at the equipment that we're gonna be using today. First off, we're gonna be using the Sony a7R 4 If you've ever watched my channel before, you know I love Sony cameras. The Sony a7R 4 has that high megapixel count. I mean, if you're gonna do product photography, you're gonna do any type of photography, highly recommend this camera. It's just got that detail, everything, so I know that this is a good choice for it. Then we're gonna be shooting on the Sony G Master 70 to 200. I can take this guy off so you can get a look. And that's the Sony G Master right there. This is a great lens just for all types of photography. I've used this lens for portrait. I've used it for beauty. I've used it for product. I've used it for swatches like we're gonna be doing today. It's a good all around lens for that good compression, good telephoto lens. Gives you a little bit of space to work with. Um, so. That's what we're gonna be working with. We got our tripod all set up here in Manfrotto. And for light source today, we're gonna to be using something a little bit different. I typically shoot with strobes, but today I wanna to shoot with continuous lighting. Continuous lighting can be really helpful and ideal for a scenario like this because you're gonna see exactly how shadows are gonna fall, how it's gonna be created, and you can get it done right by the naked eye opposed to shooting strobes off. Every single time you do, you make adjustments and you gotta take another photo. This way, before I even snap the first photo, I know what I'm probably most likely gonna get. It gives you a really good idea of what the final image is gonna look like. So today we're gonna to be using aperture lights. This is the Aperture 600D. Aperture was nice enough to send this to me. I love this light. It's probably too strong for this little setup, but that's why I love these lights is because I'd rather have too much than too little. It's kind of like being overdressed or underdressed for an event. You never wanna to be too underdressed, but if you're overdressed, you kinda of look like a boss. It's the same thing with lights. I'd rather have too much light than not enough. Having not enough light is like, it'll cripple your shoot. It'll just make everything go to shit. You don't want that. So we're gonna be using 600D by Aperture. Awesome light, I love it. All right, I'm gonna get this light set up here. This is the other piece of the Aperture light. Get this mounted on. It's pretty easy to set up. You just I switch it up like that, flip it over, lock it in place. Oh. I'm gonna start by using this hyper reflector. Sometimes I actually like the harshness that's just created by using the naked bulb, but we'll start with this. Maybe we throw a grid on, but I'll show you as we move along and see the kind of shots we're getting. All right, this will be our surface that we're gonna be shooting on. It's just a regular plastic fold up table, um, smooth surface. But I think even cooler than that is the use of this. This is something that I think could make my life so much easier and I'm getting a phone call. Hello? Yes, yeah, I'm shooting a YouTube video. You're on camera right now, actually. <laughs> cool, I'll see you in a second. Sorry about that. All right, back to what I was talking about. This surface is actually gonna help me out a lot. So I've been doing these product smears for a while now 
And something I always run into is when I use paper, it picks up like that paper texture thing that you just don't want. You end up cutting it up anyways. But on top of that, a lot of the times that these ointments or these makeup products or whatever it is, it has oils or water or something in there that gets soaked up by the paper and it can change the consistency, it can change the paper around it. And every time you clean it, you have to use another piece. So I thought, I wanna try something new. And we're gonna be using this silicone mat. I actually think it's like a baby eating mat. So uh, you put it out in front of a baby, you clean it up and it, you can wash it and all that stuff. But it has zero texture. It won't absorb anything. I can wipe it clean right afterwards. So it might actually speed everything up. Um, so I'm actually, I'm looking forward to this. I've never seen this used before. So if it works, you've seen it here first and that's what I'm gonna be using today. Here's something else that I picked up for this one. Um, these are just little palette knives. Now, if you're into painting or anything, you probably recognize these. If you're not, then this is a palette knife. You just smear, usually it's used in painting and you smear paint, acrylic paint, whatever kind of paint onto a canvas with it. But today we're gonna be designing our smears with these. I need a Tobo Chico. This is our cream that we're gonna be using today. It's got this nice green color. So it should pop pretty nicely off of this kind of gray, non-textured backdrop we're using. First thing I'm gonna be designing kind of on this end of the mat to start off with. Let's do this. Let's go ahead and blow off any kind of existing dust to make our lives a little bit easier in post. I'm just getting rid of all that dust or you know, extra just crap that's on there that we don't want part of this shot. All right, that's pretty good. And let's find a relatively not too creased area of this mat. That looks about, that looks like a good piece. And I'm starting with just a nice dollop. You know, I want to do a little bit more. Right now, this is like the most nerve wracking part as I'm trying to design what do I want this to look like? I'm think, I think I'm gonna do like a little, I like how I'm like really leaning in here so that I don't have to move the camera, but I'm thinking of doing kind of like a little roadway, a little squiggle. Let's see if, let's see if we can get that to work. And that looks like not good. Mm, no, I, I don't like that. You don't always get it right on the first try. We're gonna try again. There, I actually kind of, I actually like this one. It has a little bit of that texture I'm looking for. I'm just gonna smooth it out a little bit and then we'll shoot it. Product smears are like half photography and then half artist. Actually, no, I take it back. It's more like 25% photography, 75% artist. Okay, let's turn on the light. Now we have the hood off, so let's see how that looks on there and watch kind of how light shifts a bit when I throw this guy out on there. Shifts a tiny bit. This is probably an easier indicator to tell. Watch the napkin. We're trying to create really harsh shadows. That's what we want, like a clean line. Watch, watch the napkin. So that's without it, that's with it. See how it created that double line right there? That double shadow, we don't want that. Without, with. So because of that, we're gonna not use this hood and we're just gonna go bare ball. And I just looked at the light, don't do that. Now we're just gonna set up the tripod for this shot and raise up here. We're gonna go on and try another design and then I'll show you what that looks like. And we're gonna just keep on messing with it. But as you can see, this mat is actually working out pretty nicely. 
because we're not getting any smearing, it's not bleeding, it's not, you can clean it. So silicone mat, that's, that's the key to this tutorial. So from here on out, I love the lighting. I think it's working. The silicone mat is working, so it's all coming together, but now it's just all about the design. So we're just gonna run through a bunch of different designs, see which one we like the best, and we'll go from there. And there you have it, it's that simple. That's how I create my product smears with this easy setup. Now, if you're interested in seeing how I edit these photos in post-production, go ahead and check out the video that I made. I go through each smear, which ones I like, which ones I don't like, and how I actually edit it. All right, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me today in my studio garage. There is so much more to come from this channel. I'm looking forward to, I don't even know where this is going, but I know it's going somewhere. Um, until next time, everyone, I'm Evan Naka. See you guys.